When the German Ardennes offensive smashed through the American front lines in the forests of Belgium and Luxembourg on the 16th of December 1944, the one thing on German minds was speed. Hitler knew that he was facing much stronger opponents in the American, British and Canadian armies on the Western Front, and only through speed and surprise could he hope to achieve the offensive's objective of crossing the Meuse River and racing to the Allied supply port of Antwerp. Two panzer armies, the 5th and the 6th, crossed the front lines, using less well-equipped or trained infantry divisions to open the way for the armour. Then, strong armoured forces tried to advance and quickly capture the region's two main road junctions, the towns of Bastogne and Sanvith. But stubborn US resistance by often cut-off units slowed the German advance. The Germans managed to get beyond both towns, but well behind schedule. It had been suggested that German paratroopers might be used to land some way ahead of the advancing tanks and seize and hold certain road junctions, thereby preventing the withdrawing Americans from trying to hold them. The capture of such road junctions would also impede the US bringing in fresh reinforcements to stop the German advance. The German paratroopers, the Fallschirmjäger, had been used in such roles several times earlier in the war, particularly during the invasion of the Netherlands in 1940. It was decided to assist the advance of the 12th SS Panzer Division Hitler Jugend, which was to advance quickly to capture a crossroads at Barak Michel, today the N68, midway between the towns of Spa and Monschau, and not far from Malmede, scene of a terrible massacre. The crossroads is atop the high Fens region of the Ardennes, one of the highest points in Belgium. Seizing the crossroads would disrupt US efforts, as both roads were main supply routes for their forces fighting the German advance. Capturing the crossroads would block US reinforcements streaming down from the north. The airborne operation, codenamed Stösser, or Ork in English, would be the last full-scale German parachute drop of the war. The Germans faced some serious problems in trying to meet the operational order so late in the war. Since the invasion of Crete in 1941, when the highly trained Fallschirmjäger had taken horrendous casualties dropping onto the well-defended airfields, they had been largely re-rolled from airborne troops to elite infantry, fighting with noted skill and elan on the Eastern Front, in North Africa, Italy and in Normandy simply assembling a sufficient force of parachute-qualified men was a challenge in December 1944. Less than 2,000 men in the entire Wehrmacht by that stage were actually parachute-trained. Placed in command of the operation was one of Germany's renowned Fallschirmjäger leaders, 37-year-old Lieutenant Colonel August Baron von der Heider, who held the Knight's Cross with oak leaves. Ordered to assemble a thousand men for the operation, the jump was to be made in the early morning of the 16th of December, while it was still dark, into a wooded area. Baron von der Heide was appalled and appealed to Field Marshal Walter Model, commanding Army Group B, to cancel the operation. Model replied, It is necessary to make the attempt, since the entire offensive has no more than a 10% chance of success. Von der Heide's drop was in support of SS General Zepp Dietrich's 6th Panzer Army. Dietrich brushed aside all Heide's complaints about lack of manpower, equipment and aircraft. One of the problems was von der Heide's aristocratic pedigree. His cousin had been none other than Count von Stauffenberg, the staff officer who had tried to kill Hitler with a bomb at the Wolf's Lair headquarters on the 20th of July 1944. Baron von der Heide knew that he had no choice in the climate of suspicion since the assassination attempt. Assembling sufficient Junkers Ju-52 jump planes was very difficult. There was no spare fuel for practice jumps, and none of the pilots had dropped paratroopers before. Few had even flown in formation. But, by a miracle, 67 Ju-52s were finally assembled, late, causing the date of the operation to be pushed back to the 17th of December. 
The drop zone remained the Barak Michel crossroads, seven miles north of Malmede. The 12th SS Panzer Division had been held up on day one of the offensive by unexpectedly tough American resistance. Von der Heide was told to hold the crossroads for 24 hours until the SS arrived. The final force consisted of 870 Fauschenjäger. Most were new recruits with just the requisite training jumps under their belts to qualify for their parachute badge, plus a few seasoned Crete and North Africa veterans. With supply canisters on board, the 67 Junkers 52s took off in a snowstorm, battling strong winds and low clouds. The last combat drop of the Green Devils was about to commence. Due to pilot error, some planes became lost. 200 German paratroopers jumped near the city of Bonn, well behind German lines. Some planes returned with their paratroopers still aboard. Those that jumped over Belgium were scattered widely by disorientated pilots and strong winds, many being killed or injured on landing. Von der Heide broke his arm. Attempting to gather his force together, by noon on the 17th of December, Haider had only 300 men. Another problem was the German method of dropping the paratroopers' small arms and mortars in separate canisters. Few were recovered, leaving the 300 with pistols and a handful of rifles and machine guns from the poultry few canisters that had been located in the snow. To add insult to injury, the radios were all destroyed in heavy landings meaning that von der Heide had no communication with his headquarters or the advancing 12th SS Panzer Division. Von der Heide decided wisely to hide in the woods and only attack and occupy the crossroads when it was clear that the 12th SS was close by. His men had a few skirmishes with US patrols, and his presence actually set off a panic in the American headquarters, which became convinced that a huge force of Fallschirmjägen Perhaps an entire division was behind their lines. At least 6,000 US troops that were sorely needed at the front spent days searching for von der Heide's men. Some of the dead paratroopers were not found until the 1970s due to the remoteness of the forest. For three miserable days, von der Heide held his small battle group ready to seize the crossroads. But by the 20th, with limited water and food and no medical care for his injured and wounded, and with no sign of the panzers, von der Heide decided that the mission was over. He divided his command into three roughly 100-man groups and ordered them to walk back to German lines. Von der Heide never knew that the 12th SS Panzer Division had been unable to defeat US forces holding the critical Elsenborn Ridge. In fact, the only sector of the US front line attacked by the Germans that they failed to penetrate. Von der Heide, wounded, exhausted and frostbitten, surrendered to US forces in Monschau, where locals had been hiding him. In the end, Operation Stursa was a tragic waste of men and aircraft that achieved little except to direct some US forces in hunting them down. Never again would the Fauschenjäger fight in their traditional role. They would continue to act as elite ground troops until the end of the war. The Luftwaffe was no longer capable of supplying the large number of aircraft needed to drop big groups of paratroopers. In the end, only about a third of the men who had been with von der Heide made it back to German lines. For the Green Devils, it had truly been a drop too far. Yeah.